the reason you're here now is to see a show and it's to see a show with a person who is and I've been given this line I think it's wonderful drama teacher musician who is interested in improv I think it's a lovely tagline there so without further ado let's welcome to the stage Neil Harris Neil are you there I, I am here, Paul. Thank you so much for your introduction. And hello, everybody. And um, looking forward to, to being with you this afternoon. Um, so my name is Neil, and I'm a drama teacher here in Hong Kong. Uh, you can probably see that it's it's nighttime here. Uh, it, it's uh, 7, 7.15 here in Hong Kong. And um, yeah, I'm a drama teacher. I've been here for quite a long time. Um, I have done a little bit of, of uh, improvisation over the years and uh, obviously I do it with some of my students and then I, I play music I've always played music since I was about 13 or 14 um, and I, I was lucky enough to sort of get the tail end of the punk thing in, in Britain and uh, and don't, don't be fooled by my mild-mannered exterior um, I, I go a bit crazy sometimes and uh, so thank you so much for joining me. And who, who have we got there? Would you like to just type in anything and t type in your name or, or what you do or what, what, what creative things do you do? Just, just give me a little bit of feedback. Hey, Lauren, I know what you do. You do everything and, and anything and everything. And it's great to see you there, Lauren. Hi, Helen from the UK. Weaving as you watch. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. What are you weaving? Don't worry, it won't all be like this, just makes it just <laughs> responding to the chat. Um, I guess that is shall I? So what I want to do is I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask you some oh fantastic, we've not a tree stand in the neighborhood. Sounds good. So I'm and I'm gonna ask people questions every now and again and see if uh, see if anybody would like to answer. Cleaning my art stuff from Estonia. Great to great to meet you. I don't know how to say your name, but Tr Trinu, I guess. I think that's Trinu. So, if you don't mind, I'll ask you some questions about um, being creative. But um, just going to check my slides, and I think I'm going to start with a song. And and really, I'm just going to ask you about observation and what the role is of, of observing. You know, when we do creative things, um, what's the role of of seeing and observing. So this is a song about Ikea. I'll talk to you more about it afterwards. I am going to live in Ikea. I am going to be who I like. I'm gonna live in Ikea If the night walk spoil the curse on your Saturday night Monday, I will be finished pine Clean, fresh and wholesome I'll leave my muesli with my blonde wife Tuesday, I will be leather Black leather sophisticates, enjoy my audiovisual unit. A Wednesday, I'll be childish. I'll sleep in my bunk bed and dream in primary color. I'm gonna live in Ikea. I'm gonna be who I like. I'm gonna be in an idea. It's a nice walk, spoil the curse on your Saturday night. Thursday, I'll be in business. My chair will swivel, the function will fit form. Friday, I will be stripy, stripy clean modern living. My books lined up like letters of the alphabet. Saturday, I'll be ethnic, terracotta on the dance floor. Sunday, I'll be pastels, cream and beige. I'm gonna live in Ikea. I'm gonna be who I like. 
I put on a little idea. It's a nice walk, spoil the curse on your Saturday night. Hello, Ang P from Germany. So that that was that my song about IKEA. And uh, two two observations. Uh, we were just talking about this with the with the organisers earlier. Thank you, Helen. Um, observation number one is that um, in Hong Kong, people go to IKEA to hang out. Um, they might not be shopping. They're, 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 people live in very small apartments. Um, they might want to go out with their boyfriend or their girlfriend, and and uh, they have nowhere to go. So people hang out in IKEA, and they will have a sleep in IKEA. Nobody's buying stuff. They're just living in the little houses. So I guess that's what inspired the song. The second observation is that the the lyrics come from the catalog, really, uh, but it might be out of date because you know fashions change. So how about you guys? What about uh, observation? Uh, how important is that to you in what you do? Mm. You've only got one little small idea. Estonia, is that, that's Tallinn, is that right? Are you in Tallinn? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Art preservation is inspiration, absolutely, Helen. And you're a visual artist, are you? Would you call yourself a visual artist? Cool. Great. Okay, so... Um, I think what have I got for you now? I think um, I was going to ask you another question. So yeah, here's here's the question. Um, it's about freedom and restriction. Um, and I, I ask I ask this because uh, about freedom and restriction because when we improvise, um, and that's what this conference is really about, isn't it? It's about improvisatory kind of principles. You know, we're dealing with um, with rules and and freedoms. So um, this. This song um, is from, I'll show you the lyrics actually, uh, because I think it might make sense for you. So here is my screen here, hopefully. And um, there you go. So, so this song is called Arcadia. But the song comes from a band that I belong to called the National Geographics. And the National Geographics, they write their songs based upon pages of the National Geographic. So we don't sit and worry about, let's make up a, a, a song about a breakup. We just open, a, open up a national magazine, National Geographic magazine, and whatever the story is, we try and write a song about it. And it, it's wonderfully freeing uh, to do that. So um, this is a song called Acadia, and it's from a National Geographic piece about country parks, national parks in America. And I like it because I think it's got a, I don't know, sort of a summary feel to it. Why the road goes inland to jog upon the needle lake Built by J.D. Rockefeller, Acadia before it's too late. In the heart of the park, it's the west of the summer sound. Along the shore of Longmore, the west of the summer sound. Acadia, Acadia. In Acadia, down along the coast, taking the nature trail along the cliffs of a lighthouse in Acadia. Let's take you to Baker Island with its pioneer homes and graveyard. Find us a dance floor for another blast from the past. Blast from the past. Acadia. Acadia. 
Rockefeller Jr. Acadia before it's too late. In the heart of the park, it's the west of summer sound. Along the shore of Long Pond, west of summer sound. Acadia, Acadia. In Acadia. Thank you, Di. That last chord should have rung on a bit longer, but I was clicking back into my laptop. So, um, yeah, freedom. There's the lyrics right there. How about you guys? Have you got anything to say about the role of rules? in creative work, the role of freedoms in creative work. This, anything, free in my mind, not struggling with being constrained by COVID restrictions. That's great, Helen. Myself and, and my wife, we've been really enjoying um, uh, Grace and Perry's uh, program uh, from, from the UK about you know art in lockdown and in uh, a real Bright spark, I know he's fantastic, isn't he? Everybody should um, follow Grayson, shouldn't they? And, and read Grayson, I think, because he's just got a wonderful um, take on everything in there. Okay, thank you, Helen. Um, I think I've got a, a poem for you, but I, I, isn't that cool? The National Geographic—they're they're half my age. And when we when we take a promotional photograph, it looks like I'm their dad, and I've come to pick them up after their gig. So anyway, that's fine. Um, all right, I'm going to do a, a, a poem for you now. I, I, won't, uh, I won't show the lyrics, the, the, the words. Here it is. This is called Art Teacher. Um, I'm a, I'm, I love visual art as well. And when I was at school, uh, that was about all I was good at. Here we go. Art teacher. There's nothing of note about this area, my art teacher said. There are no views around here. She must have come from somewhere picturesque up north where nature is, I'm sure, far more ragged in tooth and claw. I piped up indignant. I was something of a prat, but there was plenty to see around here. What about the landscape gardens? There's follies and Victorian temples, I cried, as any street credibility I'd once had quickly died. All right, said Miss. You can show us these places of yours. We'll work outdoors. The next week, we couldn't stretch to landscape gardens. So instead, I marched our little band of Vincents down to the public park. Less capability brown, more public recreation brown. And there I proudly showed them the disused water tower, the slippery weir, the stagnant locks. She was polite, having viewed perhaps much nicer sights. I didn't mind though, for this here, this was my scarper fell, my highland tour, my very own Bodmin Moor my earthly paradise and it had a roundabout and swings thank you tamara is it is this about um grayson i presume your comment there is about grayson is it a, is it a work a work of his yeah. anyway sorry that was the end, that's the end of my poem i'm not very good am i maybe the kitchen's putting me off 
at least I've not got my cat roaming around. Thank you, uh, Rebecca, for, for sharing my, my Instagram. Yes, it was his book. Okay, I read the book, Tamara, which was about manliness. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but was it the same book? But that was brilliant, about, you know, sort of men in crisis, he says, from his kitchen floor. Um, yes, that's it. Okie dokie. All righty. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do an extract from a play. Because I write, I write some plays and, um, in fact, I've been working on one today. So this is a play that I wrote all about five or six years ago, and I was really into monsters and mythical creatures. And uh, I don't know why. And, um, and I sort of worked up a play about it, and then I, I managed to get it performed in America. I'll tell you about that later, because it's quite a nice story. So this is really asking the question about directness. If we're creating some artwork, how direct should we be? Should we be um, oblique? Should we, should we punch people in the gut? So here's me trying to be direct with the beginning of a play. And the mythical creature here is the Kelpie. And um, I'm sure some of you will know the Kelpie, but he's a, he's a horse sort of spirit, the half He's kind of, he's not half man, half horse. He's a shapeshifter and he comes out of the water to kill people. He's such a beautiful horse, they get on his back. So here we go. There are actors and musicians gathered in the center of the space with instruments. They look out at the audience. Do you know the tale of the Kelpie? Do you? It's by water that the Kelpie lives. The Kelpie, he is a spirit, a spirit of one who has died. He appears sometimes as a man, a charming young man. To think of it, I could be a Kelpie. You could be a Kelpie. You have the hair for it. Sometimes he's a horse. Why? You look a bit like a horse. You could be the Kelpie transformed. But don't take it bad. The, the Kelpie is one of the finest horses you will ever see. And what does he do? As a young man, he charms you. He charms the women, for sure. Let's face it, we may have a theatre full of Kelpies. But seriously now, when a horse appears, he'll be so majestic, you will think it a dream. A dream, that's it. And in this dream, those that ride on his great back, they are stuck like glue, and he makes his way straight to the water at one, one huge jump. He drags the rider under the waves to his cave, at the bottom of the lake where he feeds his family. Feeds his family. That's right. And now you know a little. So here is one such story of the Kelpie. And let's begin at the beginning. Early one evening, across a valley and close by a deep dark lake rings out a gunshot. And another. And a third. So, in, in the theatre, that's obviously direct address of the audience. But I want to ask you, how direct are you comfortable with being if you're a performer, if you create art? Is this something we should be concerned about? Well, like, you're, you're a visual artist, Helen, you're, you're making some it sounds like you're working with weaving and stuff, yeah. So, um, who is it for? And are you trying to say anything? And how direct should we be with something creative that we've made? Or I guess it's the idea of like maybe message. It's kind of a reflective thing. It's, it's, it's crafting made for others or is it would you say it's um that this rebellion is it um is it for the artists so 2021 thank you lauren yeah <laughs> um 
Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind. As long as somebody's responding, that's fine by me. I think I need to sort of keep moving because I think I'm meant to finish at, um, yeah, thank you, Laura. Um, I think I'm meant to finish at uh, 8 o'clock. So let's see what I've got next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, um, that play then, um, I managed to sort of, sort of sell it, kind of, although sell is probably the wrong word because I'm, I didn't make much money. But I, I wrote to a company in America. They were from Kentucky. And uh, I never thought I would ever be in Kentucky or go to Kentucky, but they staged it. And uh, lovely people, really nice to meet them all. And what they did, because it was a play with songs, and I don't really write music, um, as in score it, I, I could only send them the, the chord patterns and, uh, and, the, and the lyrics and record it. And then they scored it for me. And the great thing about it going to Kentucky was they turned it into bluegrass music. So they put their violins on it and things like that. And so the, the stuff I sent to them became something quite different, really, in their hands. And the, the, the fabulous thing to come out of it, as well as a wonderful life experience of going there and being taken around by these great people in Kentucky, was um, that they recorded it and uh, there's a CD. So um, you can find it on Amazon. It's called Kelpie. Um, and uh, it's just fabulous to have that to, to take away. So this is a song from from the same show, and I'd like to imagine the uh, imagine the violins and other American instruments. And so there's also many more voices than than mine in this song. Sort of country. I will walk with you Wish and tales by day and night Till we reach a lake A fire we will light A fire we will light I will take you down We'll sing songs here by the lake Songs to shadow, songs to deep, a drowning song will make, a drowning song will make. Bring all the song, bring on the rain, bring on the day We'll sing sim hymns to dark and deep. I'll show you what lies below. No secrets will I keep. No secrets will I keep. I will swim to the river's mouth. Say our prayers to those we've lost. Their sins to water's heart. Their sins to water's heart. Bring on the storm. Bring on the rain. Bring on the day of seeing you. See you again. Thank you. Thank you. Or oh, you found my album. But that should increase sales significantly, Lauren, I think. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, Bring On the Storm from Kelpie, a play with songs. Whee! Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Is there anybody else there? Lauren, Helen. 
That's fine. Um, lovely. Thank you very much, Rebecca. See her. I love that. We're doing that at my school as well. Um, I'm going to be bear. I want to be B E A R bear. Thank you, Trina. Am I saying your name right? Is it how how I don't know how I say the E. Trina or Trina. Yeah, B more R. He's in Estonia. Yes. I know, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. I've been to Estonia. Oh, Helen, thank you so much. That's great. It's a bit like a, a bit like a dream catcher, is it? Sort of. Am I? No idea. You know, like the, the, the Native American dream catchers. So let's see what I can do now then. Um, I've got a poem for you, but it's a bit gloomy. But um, there you go. Life can be gloomy, can't it? Yeah. So which one is a story capture or a song capture? I've got you. Yeah. Dream capture. I love that. You could sell those. I think this is great. It's, this is fantastic networking, isn't it, Lauren? You know, like people flogging stuff. Someone sits on their floor in their kitchen and people are selling things. This is capitalism. <laughs> All right, uh, Lauren and 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 uh, um, and um, Lauren and Rebecca, you didn't hear this yesterday, but this is a poem. It's quite a serious poem. I'd like to I'd like to be more popular for my poems, but nobody likes my poems. Here we go. This is a, a poem called Cliff Jumping, and uh, in West Wales, where I holiday a lot, it's very very rugged and fantastic and. Um, they're natural and you've got these fantastic sheer cliffs looking down on a very very dark and foreboding sea and it's pretty cold even on the hottest of days and um, what the locals do the locals who, who have to make a living out of season they just for fun they just go jumping off these cliffs like crazies you know and it's deadly dangerous and most years somebody will will drown or die um, so uh, I just thought this is an, a crazy idea, an amazing idea. And, and you go to the cliffs and you can see the hole in the cliff top where you, people literally plunge down the hole and they might fall, you know, 80 feet. And they have to time the, the waves so that they're hitting it at its highest point in the swell. And if they don't, they will die. So it's deliberately kind of daredevil stuff. And it's stuff for men, I guess. And, and um, I'm sure some women do it, but it's kind of a, man, a male thing. And I was interested by this. And I was also walking with my son um, in on these cliffs as well, and thinking about these men who did this thing. And just as we were walking, we saw a beautiful golden eagle. I think it was a golden eagle. It was a raptor, and it was golden, you know, just glistening in the sun. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it's just perched on the edge of the cliff. And as we came up, it just dropped its wings and went straight down. Um, and it was just a, a marvelous, marvelous sight. So I came away and I wrote a poem, cliff jumping. Imagine we could drop ourselves towards the rocks below. The crumbled edge of moss, scree and sand invites us. With aching limbs still warm for the climb. We rest to plot our diving arc in views across the bay, in angles and trajectories that point towards the steel of sea that bridges here and America. We have prepared for this rush between land, sky and water with flasks of strong tea. The biscuit crumbs will form a trail for the local rag to send their man who covers just this sort of end of season event. So, um, a bit gloomy, a bit gloomy, but based upon some nice things. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What have I got? I've got 10 minutes left. But there was a question attached to that, which is about editing. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to edit it together. Okay, you ready? 
but you should be able to see it now yeah i just thought we'd edit this together and, and I'm, I'm just going to ask you to um be ruthless and line by line just think <laughs> line by line um to, to, what words don't i need <laughs> You can do it with me, Lauren, if you like. I can. I am 100%. So okay. mm -hmm. go for it, Lauren. So are we going to keep imagine? Do we not need that? No, I like that. Um, Second line. Yeah, we did that. So, well, it, it's poetry, so I, I don't think we need below because the rocks are inferred that they're below if we're dropping. Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. Below. And I would say also could is possible. So I would wonder if you need it or not. When it's I, I felt exactly the same. Yeah, we drop ourselves. Crumbled edges of moss, scree and sand invites us. Mm, I like that. Crumbled at the edge, crumbled edge. Mm. Take away the. Um, so, yeah, the I think so. Yeah. <laughs> we're, in, we're in each other. My now with aching limbs. So I would take away with. Thinking limbs, and I would say still should get cut. Aching limbs warm from the cliff. We rest to plot our diving arc in views across the bay. I like that. In angles and trajectories that point, I would take away towards. The steel of sea that bridges here and America. Could America could and America be another line? Could it read differently? The steel of sea that bridges. And I would take away here. This is so weird editing someone else's poem. Here? Yeah, I would take away here. The steel of sea that bridges. Mm, and America. I don't know. I don't know if I just changed the meaning. Whoa. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. We have prepared for this rush. Ooh, what if you put rush on a new line also? We have prepared for this rush. Hmm. Between land, sky, and water, with flasks of strong tea, the biscuit crumbs will form a trail for the local rag to send. That will? Sure, yeah. And take away the biscuit crumbs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, I can't see below this line. Who covers just the sort of end of season? That's it. That is the end. Mm -hmm. line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm. That was fun. Mm. Yeah, that was I'll fun. Try I'll, mm. try I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. What happens? Imagine. Oh, Helen, I, I didn't see you. Sorry. <laughs> Helen, you got another suggestion of words to take out. I sort of we oh she loves it now. Imagine we drop ourselves towards the rocks, crumbled edge of moss, scree and sand invites us, aching limbs warm from the climb. We rest to drop our diving arc in views across the bay in angles and trajectories that point this steel of sea that bridges America. We have prepared for this rush between land, sky, and water with flasks of strong tea. Biscuit fum crumbs form a trail for the local rag to send their man who covers just this sort of end of season event. That's fab. That's better, isn't it? That's better. Hope, oh, love it, yeah. Love that on a rush. No, love it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, he 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 Helen, um, I've just got a few minutes left. I'm going to show you some some of my drawings, okay? So when I was at uh, university, um, which is a quite a long time ago now, um, I was lucky enough to do visual art as well as drama. And um, my I had a printmaking lecturer. They, the lecturers were great. They were really good fun. And this guy was uh, really taking the, the mickey out of me a lot. And he, he said to me, oh, this reminds me of Giacometti. And he said to me, go and research Giacometti. I said, who? He said, go and research Giacometti, the Irish sculptor. So I literally went to the library and looked for O, for Ometti. And then, of course, you know, the, the librarian says, there is no Jack Ometti. It's Giacometti, the Italian. So I go back to the lecturer and, you know, they're well done. They made me, made 
made me look foolish. Anyway, all of these years later, the Giacometti sculptures, the type that I think some of them are very small, some of them are bigger, of, of these kind of people sort of leaning into, into the um into the future, if you like, uh, very thin people. So in Hong Kong, there's a lot of very narrow streets uh, in, on the island, which is a very steep island with very steep hills. And um, so they're so steep that people call them things like Ladder Street. That's, the, that's how they're named. So um, I realized as I started, I was drawing people on this Ladder Street from a coffee shop. It's just about down here. It's a little coffee shop. And you can see people coming up that road. It doesn't really capture how steep it is, but believe me that that's a really sharp incline. And I draw on this, which is a little kind of tablet, which replicates paper. And this is a Giacometti sculpture. And uh, so now I've got this little kind of hustle going on, which, which is called Giacometti Street Drawings. And when I sit in the coffee shop, I have about, I have about, eight seconds to capture people, about eight seconds. And then uh, I have to try and capture what I can about them in eight seconds. And so the, here's, here's some of them there. And then they're kind of genderless. And then I try and capture the, the, the little something about them. And then um, here's a few more. M my, my wife's just here. Mary's just come back. So th this one is particularly Giacometti, isn't it? And and uh, then this is probably one of my favorite. And given only eight seconds, I've got to start with the, the salient feature. So that's, that's the woman's stomach. And then bizarrely, after having done hundreds of these, and I, I post about, you know, maybe 20 or 30 of my favorite ones, um, the one that's got the most reaction is this fella here. How funny is that? So thank you so much for joining me uh, to look at creativity and to talk about creativity. I'll stop sharing my screen now. And um, thank you so much, Chinu, Helen, and others who have been with me today. Thank you, Lauren, Anki. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a real pleasure. And congratulations, Lauren. Thanks, Helen. Cheers, Paul. Oh, th well, thank you, Neil. Lovely, a, a lovely mixture of things there. Really, really love it. And it was lovely how you managed to get people involved in actually creating the, the poems and that. <laughs>